Here we are talking about creating fear-free visits for pets. And Lisa, in 20 seconds, let's go back. What, how's the, the, a veterinary visit been for a companion animal? So they, they leave home, what's it like for a typical pet over the last decades? So first of all, imagine that you do not speak English. Not only that, but you're from another planet. So you don't even understand the body language. You go to a place where people who are always dressed the same way, which affects your future behavior, do things to you that is extremely personal. You don't speak the language. They grab you, they take your temperature, which is supposed to be exit only as far as dogs are concerned, <laughs> right? And, the, and that entire experience is uncomfortable and painful, right? So, so, so they're, they're, they come in, don't speak the language, have things done that have never been done. Gary, you've been a veterinary behaviorist for decades. What's that do to a pet? Well, what it does to them is that the very things we say not to do when we're talking about approaching a new pet, when we're talking about interacting with a pet, when we're talking about building up a social relationship, we do to those pets because we're in a rush, we're in a hurry, we have a limited amount of time, we have a narrow area, they're already fearful to begin with, and the very ways we handle them, their ears, which we should avoid, uh, their anal sacs, which we definitely want to avoid, are things that they're there for. Nail trims, which should take a long, long time to get them used to, we're supposed to do in a moment and build a positive relationship. No, we build a negative relationship. So, so what happens to these, uh, it seems like if you looked at, we're, we're good at finding symptoms as veterinarians. We're trained to find symptoms and then based on this, we're gonna do this treatment plan, right? But somehow we've ignored all these symptoms of fear and anxiety. We, we can notice stuff for, uh, you know, uh, vomiting and diarrhea or for a painful skin condition symptoms and treatment plans, but here we've ignored all these signs of these symptoms of anxiety and stress. So either it's like it's, we've been treated like the common cold that's not worth worrying about or we've, we haven't known all these symptoms and by doing so, not only has the pet been extremely stressed and fearful, but the owners have increasingly not taken them in. And can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so another aspect I just want to present is the aspect from the veterinarian and the veterinary technician standpoint. Wouldn't it be nice if we had to muzzle less pets? Wouldn't mm -hmm. it be nice if our risk of biting went down? Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to go to sedation of the pet who is already agitated neurochemically? We know we have to use more sedation in those pets. Wouldn't it be nice if we were safer? And that's one of the outcomes of helping that pet be less anxious. So you look at it from the pet and you say, that pet is less fearful. We have helped an animal. That is why we went to veterinary school, period. But what about that next step? What about being safer in practice? What about less bites? What about the client seeing what we did for that pet and understanding the depth with which we care? Because that sign I remember in the equine hospital at U of F when I went to vet school, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's the truth. Right. So Gary, let's say we, we now go from where we're just looking at physical well-being of pets to looking at physical well-being and emotional well-being. We truly create a fear-free visit where both the pet and the pet owner don't fear coming to the veterinarian. What advantage is that to uh, a veterinarian, a technician, or a hospital by offering fear-free veterinary visits? Well, from a very practical standpoint, some of it takes a very minor adjustments and some of it takes a lot of work. Some of the pets are, well, every pet is an individual, so we have to tailor what we need. And some of them will need sedation, but it's going to be a lot better for everybody. But with that attitude, with that change that we make to be fear-free, or at least minimize the fear for those pets who are very fearful, people will be more amenable to bringing their pets back. They'll be less anxious themselves about bringing the pet back, which we can argue it means a less anxious pet as well because they're quite good at observing and feeling what their owners are feeling. We'll have better um, um, compliance with pet care. A lot of compliance is related to um, the feeling about uh, the veterinary visit itself and they're not going to get compliance if they don't get in there. It's better for the pet, it's better for the owner, it's better for the veterinary right. practice. Yeah. I think we can sum this up by saying by taking the pet out of petrified you put pets back into practices and practices have been doing this for the last five years have seen dramatic in increases in net operating profits have seen dramatic increases in uh, job satisfaction, dramatic decreases in these job-related injuries that Lisa talked about. 
And it's kind of like weight loss with pets. You don't have to do all of it to get most of the benefits. So I think that's what you're seeing. Sometimes it's just minor things that you do differently with every visit or just with one visit. With this pet, do this differently, you get a lot of the benefit. And Absolutely. as Fear Free grows, there'll be more and more available and resources. But even now, there are brochures, there are books, there's literature, there's finding the right material. You can get started now.